live with this new camera setup. Let me pull it up on my computer so I can see what's going on. Looks a little blurry. I wonder if I could just use the other side. Instructions. <sighs> I don't know if this is any better than the webcam. All right. Well, hello to those of you who are watching. Sorry for all the stuff. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. There's a little bit of a delay, so it takes me a second to figure out if what I'm doing is actually helpful. Let me try moving. Oh, there's some dust bunnies. Okay, maybe this will work. As long as I don't bump the, the camera. I've got this gooseneck kind of thing that was on an Amazon lightning deal, so... Okay, so let's go. Um, I'm working on this pattern called, thank you. Um, this is called Baby Travel Accessories from Patterns by Annie. Hi, Joanna. I'm, I'm, I'm not good at this, uh, trying to get this camera angle. But anyway, this is what the pattern looks like. I make a lot of patterns by Annie. I just really like her construction methods. They're very unique. I don't know of any other patterns that do this type of thing. She's got a whole whole ecosystem going because she she makes the soft and stable. I don't know if you can if you can see what what that looks like here. It's just a foam interfacing, so kind of like Pelon Flex Foam, and I think there's some other brands too. But um, I really like it. It's definitely not not cheap, but um, I find that I just really like the the uh, the results a lot. So, so I guess I'm willing to spend it. Hello, Ms. Red. All right. So the picture looks blurry on my screen. I don't know what is it. Is this look? Is it clear, you guys? I hope I didn't smudge my camera or something. All right. Well, okay. So I, so having so having said all that, um, by Annie patterns by Annie, um, they make their own videos. So this isn't gonna be a tutorial because I. Okay. Good. Thank you, Joanna. Okay. Good. Thank you, Cindy. Um, so yeah, they like they do their own tutorials, and that's kind of part of their business plan, which I fully respect. So I'm um, I'm not gonna be like giving a step by step. It's just gonna be more like. Um, kind of like a so along with me sort of thing and and then I can probably answer some questions as long as they don't give away information on the pattern but um, and the other thing is that patterns by Annie don't they don't uh, do PDF patterns with a few exceptions like their freebies are PDFs and the reason for that is that they like to support local quilt shops and then also since unfortunately we don't all have those near us you can also buy her patterns directly from her you can buy them from online sellers like I've gotten them off of Etsy and other like online fabric stores and they do have some on Amazon too 
So anyway, let me get started. All right, so I have my zipper. Okay, so I need to sew the zipper on. And I'm not someone who uh, was ever really afraid of zippers, and I think it was just that I didn't have very high expectations for myself. I mean, this is back, oh my gosh, over 20 years ago when I started sewing and making things that required zippers. So that's why what I always tell people is just uh, don't be so hard on yourself. If it looks crummy, I mean, what, what are you really missing? Like, you can rip it out and even worst case scenario, so you have a bad looking project. I mean, the world will continue to function and it's all good. Oh, I almost did this wrong. Right sides together. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I definitely understand why why people are afraid of trying new techniques and everything. I think that's just normal human behavior. But um, you also have to put it into perspective. So, like I said, what's the worst that's going to happen? I mean, it's... In most cases, whatever you sew for the first time ever is not going to be great. But that's like any other skill. So any other skill that you have, whenever you started doing that, that activity, you probably were not good at it. So, oh, that's great. Yeah, that's another thing that I have. I'm the zippers by the yard. I actually bought some. Um, there's a Etsy shop I just ordered from for the first time because they had the most of what I needed. I was trying to order from fewer shops and, you know, consolidate shipping that I'm paying for. It's Indo Love Creation, Creations with a K on Etsy. And she had some really great hardware and zippers that I'm using for my other Buy Any project. I'm making an ultimate travel bag this weekend, too. So, okay, let me figure out what I need to do. Alright, so I sewed that. I need to finger press it. Okay. And this is just a general buy any technique, so no one's going to object to me sharing that. But So she has you uh, um, sew zippers with a quarter inch seam allowance, and then you just finger press it like this so that you're just seeing the zipper tape instead of being up so it looks nicer. And then you just finger press it, and then you and then you do a top stitch. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the, the travel bag, like everyone else making travel bags, is a product of wishful thinking. Lengthen my stitch a little bit, but a lot of times planning ahead is what gets us through uh, trying times. So I got some Allison Glass Art Theory fabric. It's, um, she had the Ex Libri, I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that, um, collection a few years back and it's just gorgeous. And then she made a new collection with, it's pretty much the same motif, but she made some more prints that coordinate and I, I've bought like six yards of it. It's so gorgeous, but that's what I'm using for the ultimate travel bag. like. I think probably four of those prints in it. All right, so now you can see on the back here. So it didn't enclose it completely, and you you could just trim it down a little bit before you sew this seam. But honestly, I just I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> I think it's fine the way it is. Okay, so then I have to attach this. Oh, and this is something that I waited too long to start doing. I just take little scraps of paper. Um, buy any patterns actually the newer ones come with um, labels that you can cut out but this is an older pattern so it didn't have them so I just uh, made my own 
symbol didn't cost me a thing. It was paper I would have thrown away otherwise. So now I need to attach this. Oh, now that I think of it, I was going to have this, this be on the outside, not this. Whoops. Oh well. We're just gonna go with it. This, um, this is a, um, a gift for, um, sorry, I'm trying to talk and work and think all at the same time, and it's sometimes a challenge. Anyway, this is a gift for my cousin who is having her first child. She lives up in St. Paul, Minnesota. If you're outside the U.S., that's uh, way in the northern part of the United States. Um, sort of near Canada. So sometimes their regional accents overlap a little bit. Because I'm from Wisconsin, which is right next to it, and a lot of times people will... will uh, ask me if I'm Canadian. I've actually never been to Canada. Someday. But anyway, yeah, so this is for my cousin, and it's weird because um, I'm sure this has happened to, to those of you with uh, younger relatives, but you, you know, like, I remember when she was born. Um, I was nine, and now she's having her first child. So circle of life, I guess. So anyway, um, I highly doubt that, uh, she is, uh, watching me here on YouTube, so I don't think there's going to be any spoilers. And if so, oh well. She still gets the gift, so the gift is more important than the surprise, or the element of surprise. Yeah, and then, um, I am in Florida, so if you're outside the U.S., that's the complete opposite, like, Minnesota's at the top of the U.S., at least the continental U.S., and then Florida's at the bottom. So, um, if I remember right, she's due in April, something like that. Um, but we're having a, a, a virtual baby shower for her, so... I'll be uh, mailing her gifts to her, and then she opens them on either Zoom or whatever, whatever service that they're using for that. Okay, so I got this, and then I'm supposed to stitch all the way around the piece, but I did that in an earlier step. All right, so this is what I've got right now. This is going to be a cylinder. I can't believe I did this. I was not even thinking. Because this is what the... This is the outside. The top with the handle. Oh, well. Um, I'm actually making her four different items with all these fabrics. And this line is... Uh, Eso I think it's Esoterra. Um, it's an art gallery fabric. The designer, I, her name is, I think, Katarina. And it's something with an R that I... Even if I had it in front of me, I wouldn't be able to pronounce, but anyway, that should be enough to find the information if anyone was interested. This has been out for a few years, and then I bought it on Etsy from a local shop. Alright, and then, and then for the quilting also, I'm not a quilter, so um, what she has you do with her patterns is you take a larger piece of fabric, enough to cut all the pieces that you'll eventually need, and then you just sandwich the lining, the soft and stable in the main fabric together, and then you just pin it, and then you quilt it. So what I did was I just stitched narrow, wavy lines. Um, at first I thought it'd be cool to kind of follow the lines that are already on the fabric, and then decided that was way too ambitious and time-consuming, and probably no one would even notice anyway. So I did this. Alright, and then... Um, Oh, and these zippers. I got these from Zip It on Etsy. She doesn't do the zippers by the R, which are really popular right now, but the prices are good, and it's a Wisconsin business, and I like supporting people from my native Wisconsin. Okay, so I need to 
put on the hanging strap. All right, let me get those. This one's for the passy pod. I'll toss it over there. Oh, and one of these. Okay. It's really bugging me that this is so blurry for me. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll list the supplies, unless they're like so old that I no longer know where I got them, but I think this is all newer stuff. Um, I buy the soft and stable off of Amazon. Um, but yeah, I'll put some links later. Um, looks like I've got a couple things that are on. Yeah, my Amazon thing is I had it set up so it's so it automatically goes on the video description every time I upload a video. But I'll have to add the rest. Okay. All right. So let's figure this out. All right, so I have our hanging strap. I need to put it on top of the zipper on the closed end. Okay. So this is where it goes. All right, so I guess we're just doing this to embed it in the seam. Okay. All right. And these are nylon zippers, so it is okay to sew over them. Metal ones, no. And now, even if you like the look of a metal zipper, they have zippers that look like they're made of metal, but they're nylon teeth. All right, now I need to trim off my extra zipper tape. I think these, these little clips and D-rings, I think these, I'm pretty sure these are just from Amazon. There. Okay. And I gotta put the rectangle over here. Oh, I'm missing uh, my thread paths. That's why my thread keeps doing weird stuff. Okay, there we go. Yeah, this is a pattern where you have to sew a round object to a flat one, which I believe is coming up on this pattern, which is a very intimidating. But if you cut and sew it accurately, everything should fit. Alright, so now I have the side. Okay. So, this is weird how they have it. But this is the way it's said to do it. Okay, so I need this to be the same height, which it already is. Oh, I think I know what this is. I bet this is going to be a self-binding. Okay, so this has to go, um, go this way, I think. Oh, it is a little longer on this side. All right. So as you can tell, I've never made this pattern before. I'm going to sew on this side. All right, let's see how this, how this works out. I was wondering why they have the lining much larger than the, the main fabric. And I think I know why. Okay. 
Yep. Fold raw edges of excess lining over the outer edge of the seam. Fold over again. Okay, yep, it's a binding. So yeah, this, um, I decided to make, make stuff, I, I, I usually do make gifts for people when they have babies, but I, I was thinking of just buying off her registry, and then, thought, you know what, this is, this is more special. And I talked to her mom, who is my aunt, and she said that her daughter would um, would think would think uh, whatever I made was awesome. So I'm like, cool. That's all I needed to hear. Because that's all you can ever ask for if you make a gift for somebody is that they appreciate it and use it. doesn't look too bad. Alright, so... So there's our binding. Alright, excuse my reach. Alright, done with that page. Okay, now I have to sew the other side on. Oops. Try not to bump the camera, and I just totally did. Alright, I need to get this all situated. It is so nice of y'all to uh, join me and... Oops, sorry again. While I figure out this camera setup, and hopefully don't make you guys all seasick from camera shake. I'm trying to eyeball the seam allowance because this extra fabric right here is in my way. Honestly, I don't know why they even did it this way. They could have just done binding the, the normal way, but... Let me cut off this excess zipper here. But this is one of her older patterns. I've, I've noticed that she's been um, updating older ones. So they're, they're all consistent. And then she's been filming videos video tutorials for each one where um, they actually um, come free with the purchase of the pattern. I tend not to need them, but I made the grab some grub lunch bag and um, I thought, well, why not? I'll, I'll see uh, see what the video is like, and it was really helpful. I kind of like, like the idea of, like, having a sewing buddy, even though the person is, has already made the video and doesn't know I exist, but it's still fun. Alright, well that came out a little nicer than this one, but this is the inside of the bag, so it doesn't really matter. Alright, so now I need to trim off, so you have a little bit of excess right here I need to trim off. I'll just use my tiny scissors, so I don't have to get up and grab my fabrics. Big scissors. There we go. I'm a big believer in cleaning up as you go. I It makes me crazy as seeing um. Sometimes people will post a photo of their sewing area and be like, hey, look how, how messy this is. And I'm like, I, I don't know how you 
how you exist in that space. All right, so now we have to attach these tops and bottoms. So top and bottom. Okay, so the top has the handle. This is the top. All right. So I'm going to make little markings. I actually don't know if she's doing this in the pattern, but yeah, it's it's um this is a bottle holder. At first I was just going to make ooh, put that in there. I was just going to make her a changing pad. It's like a clutch, which is also another by any pattern. And then I saw this pattern on there and thought, well, that stuff looks useful too. I'll make that for her as well. And I just had to buy a fourth yard of fabric to make that happen. And that works out well because I don't have much left over from this fabric which is good because this is not the type of print that I have any sort of use for. I'm not a, I'm not a dinosaur person and I don't know of anyone else having children who want dinosaur stuff, so I like being able to use all of it up so it's not just languishing in a drawer for several years. Especially since I've spent money on it, you know. You don't want your money just sitting somewhere and not not being utilized. Alright. Figure out which way I want the the handle to go. Oops. Alright, let me see which way. Okay, so we're gonna have the circle against the bed of the machine. I just made little uh, quarter markings and clipped very, very slightly into the seam at once. You don't want to go too far, otherwise it's not, it's, you're going to have a hole in your project. Alright, so once I get the quarters marked, okay good, so far it appears to be fitting. With this sort of thing, you want to really, really, really clip it. Oh, before I forget to, I'm going to just partway unzip my zipper. So I can turn this thing right side out after I sew these top and bottom pieces on. And then as for the clips, I have, I have the Wonder Clip brand, a few of these. The red ones I bought from a local quilt shop to try out and then then realized that they are one of the best things ever. I wish they'd invented them earlier or I'd thought of using binder clips before these were invented. And I proceeded to buy some more except I got these other colors off of Amazon. I see that question asked in sewing groups every now and then if, you know, are the generic ones as good as the Clover brand and I don't really have a definitive answer I've I've had these generic ones and the Wonder, Wonder Clip ones for probably about four years and I don't recall any of the Wonder Clip brand ones breaking yet I mean I would imagine they would eventually because they were they're made of plastic mostly but I have had several of these cheaper Amazon ones break. So, so I, I really think it's kind of relative because yeah, several have broken, but they were far less money and they, and I didn't have any break for the first three years that I owned them. They're just now over the past years starting to break. So, I don't know. 
when when these uh when these are all gone, I'm I'm just gonna buy the cheap ones again. Plus the colors are more fun. They make all these pretty multiple colors and it's I don't know, I was like having all different ones. So this is a this requires you to really take your time. Because you are sewing around a very small circle. <clears throat> I just love by any patterns. They are wonderful. <clears throat> oh yeah, I saw that too. People um, using staples in some instances instead of clips. If it's, I've seen that because sometimes if it's a really stubborn area that you have to kind of pull on to sew, sometimes you'll pull the clip right off while you're pulling and then obviously it's not helping if it's not attached so I, I have seen people use staples yeah um, yeah it's just one other option I have I've tried it before and worked fine I think it was like a really bulky purse with a lot of vinyl if I remember correctly Okay, so this looks all right, I think. Yeah. All right, let me turn this right side out to check for puckers. If they're really bad, I will fix those by re-sewing. Hey! That's good, I like this. I, th I think it looks good. There's a very teensy pucker right there that I'm not going to worry about. Yeah, and there's a little handle. So you can kind of see what's, what it's going to look like. Yay, that's exciting. Alright, so I'm going to flip it inside out again because I have to sew the bottom on next. I'm almost done with this particular project because I started last weekend and I didn't have any um, I didn't have any suitable zippers for it so those arrived yesterday and here I am today using them so I just have to attach the bottom and then bind it which um, as a non-quilter I had not had any experience doing before and it is so not a big deal especially the way that by Annie has you do it so it made perfect sense to me and it looks really really nice you're not having to like surge the edges or something like that it just looks really good everything's enclosed and hidden Oh, I didn't clip the top of this yet. I'm not sure about this camera angle. I feel like it's not really capturing everything. Or maybe I just need to remember to keep my project in front of the camera so you can see it. I don't know. Video production is definitely not a skill that I have, and I don't really have time to learn it. So, maybe someday. Oops, sorry. Okay, good. So let's clip this on. Yeah, the, um, the video I was just watching when I started up this video was Okla Roots. If you're not subscribed to her channel, I highly recommend it. Her videos are what I wish mine looked like. 
but I just don't have the time or energy to make them that well. I mean, they're, they're edited well, they're well lit, they're well explained. I like her uh, very upbeat personality. So I don't know if she's naturally that way or she's just got some really good meds that I need to get a hold of, but she's just very fun to watch. And then when she started doing the machine embroidery videos, I'm like, this is wonderful. I'm so glad that someone else is doing these because I felt a little guilty that I have pretty much stopped making those, especially with the machine issues. So anyhow, long story short, Okla Roots on YouTube, highly recommend, tell her I sent you. She's also someone who lives in Florida despite the, the name Okla Roots. That's a lot of people who live in Florida or from somewhere else. So not unusual. A lot of people come here for various reasons. I came here because I couldn't find a job in Wisconsin after I graduated college and oops there goes a clip and here I am so I can't say I'm a huge fan of this state especially where I live but I don't know there's good and bad to it I like that the neighborhood I live in is not overly bougie it's diverse. I feel safe here. Housing is affordable. So, uh, focus on the good and not all the Trump flags that are still flying throughout the neighborhood. Sorry, not sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. I I don't think uh, Jess from Oakland Roots has ever done a live video. Yeah, and she probably doesn't have time. In her uh, Q and A video that she released recently, I watched that, and she confirmed she indeed has a full time job and kids and everything. I don't know how she has that level of energy and enthusiasm to make a weekly video and a good one at that like I barely have energy to do these lives like a few times a year I think I'm actually on a roll right now I think I've like, yeah I did one last weekend too so I'm on a roll here but yeah so she's not only got to do that she's got to make every pattern twice because she tries it out to see how it goes gives it like a test run and then makes a second one for the video. I don't know how she has time to do that. She she does have some help, she said. Like, she said her husband helps with some social media stuff, like handling the YouTube comments, so he gets rid of the trolls for her, and then her mom is helping with some stuff. I can't remember what she said, but... So that's really cool. Um... Hello, Jay Wilson. Yeah, I, I have tried recruiting my husband to edit videos for me, but he's just like, I don't know what I would edit out and what I would keep, and I'm like, all right, that's fine. He's a teacher, too. He's not going to hold it against him for not wanting to make videos with me. All right, so I need to bind this. Well, I'm almost done with this project. Next will be the Passy Pod, and that I'm expecting to be very quick. It also helps that I made some of it last weekend. I made all the parts that I could make that didn't require a zipper. Which I now have, so now I can make them. I also needed some PUL fabric which I have purchased. I washed it because it smelled disgusting. 
So I got that for the changing pad. So, oh yeah, the Brooklyn by Swoon. That is, yeah, that's a really popular pattern. I've, I've made the travel size and the purse size. And yeah, it, it fits together so nicely. Just really, really good work. Oh, my kitty is trying to get in. He's so sweet, but so naughty. I have a few cats, and uh, this little stinker, he likes to come in here and then chew on these uh, rubber floor mats that I have on the floor, because this is, it's like a, like a lanai or, no, not a lanai, like a three season porch kind of dealio that I'm in here, that I'm in right now. So the floors are concrete, so um, I got these like rubberyish interlocking floor mats, and he likes to come in here and chew them. It's, uh, I don't know, cats are cute, they're not necessarily smart animals. I'm like, well, why would you do this, kiddo? So, anyway, he's been really, really adamant about chewing them lately, so. I'll let him in, out here once in a while, and yeah, he just immediately goes to chew him and he gets kicked out, so. He's scratching at the window right now, thinking I want to go eat some rubber and throw up. And I am saying no thank you. So right now I'm stitching on the binding. Yeah, so, um... Yeah, the first uh, Brooklyn I made was the traveler size, and I um, I gave that to one of my aunts and uncles as a gift. I had this fabric; it, it was like a like a twill weight fabric, and it's a uh, I still have a little bit of it. It's a Schlitz beer print, super super old fabric. I don't know how old. Um, my uh, late great aunt. She, uh, she had it, and, uh, when she, uh, was no longer able to sew, she gave me her fabric stash, and she had a lot of really retro stuff. You can tell she hadn't bought anything in a very long time. It was all older stuff, and then she had that Schlitz beer fabric in there, and I just thought that was cool. I'd never seen anything like it. I didn't know that, uh, Schlitz beer ever licensed out their logo to make fabric, but apparently they did. Oh, you know what? Let me grab this. Okay. Let me try to get this in the frame. There we go. This is a photo of my great aunt Dolores in 1953 out west riding a buffalo. Since it's tiny, I know you can't see a ton of detail, but you get the idea. She is wearing these like low heeled shoes and probably like pantyhose or whatever, riding a buffalo and just enjoying the crap out of life. She lived to be 98 and 11 months. Just the coolest person. So I, um, I scanned that photo and I uh, heat transferred it onto some t-shirts for my mom and I and as I was doing that um, it was I think it was the day of or the day after I found out she had passed so and then a good friend of mine um, she made those little pendants it's like laser cut wood I don't know exactly how she makes them but she, um, her name of her business is I am so not cool and she makes stuff like that, like, based on, like, vintage ephemera kind of stuff, professionally and wholesales and everything. It's really cool. So anyway, it's a nice little memorial. I just have to get a chain that fits that pendant. I have one in my car, too. All right, some of the in-the-hoop zipper bags. Um, so, Jay Wilson, um, that's a good question. I think it really depends on on what, like, the particular style that you want. If it's just, like, a basic zipper bag without any sort of embellishment on it, 
Um, I would just use a sewing machine. I mean, it, it is really quick on, on the embroidery machine too, and then your the another advantage is that your seams are always perfectly straight. Um, but now that I, I have both and I've done both, I'd rather just sew it on the sewing machine, especially since to get a zipper at the top, it's a little tricky on an embroidery machine. I know Parker on the porch has mastered it. But if you're looking for a, a, a zipper bag or a little purse that has like embellishments, like it's a, it's a, a special shape or it has embroidery or applique designs on it, then I would do in the hoop. So like the disorderly threads bags, um, those all have embroidered designs on them. And some of them have uh, special shapes, um, like the mini bus bag that I released the video for recently. It's actually shaped like a mini bus. And then I know Parker on the porch has a lot of animal shaped bags. Those would be a lot easier just to do on an embroidery machine, but anything else I just make on my sewing machine. Yeah, but as far as ones that I've personally tried, um, definitely Disorderly Threads. That's how my channel got started, actually. I just loved her designs. Still do. I just don't have uh, much time to make tutorials for them anymore. Um, and then Parker on the Porch. Those two designers have been on, around a long time, and... The quality of their their work is very consistent. They have longevity and everything. They have a, a following and everything. So um, that would be the those would be the two companies that I would recommend. Actually, I don't know if I've even done. I must have done zipper bags from, from other brands, but I just cannot remember off the top of my head right now. Um. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank. Oh yeah, the camper too. Yeah, the the camper zipper bag that that was my very first YouTube video I ever made. I remember that it was several years ago, and I did not know at the time that you had to have permission. Hold on, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> I'm sorry if that was loud. I tried sneezing into my uh, shoulder. I don't know if that was effective in muffling the sound. But anyway, um, I didn't know you had to get permission from the designer to film a tutorial on their on their product. Because, um, I mean, I knew you couldn't, like, share a file. That's, like, the worst thing you could possibly do. But um, I didn't know that the instructions were also copyrighted. But luckily, she was so cool about it. Like, she, you know, she, she did send me an email saying, hey, you know, this this is not... You're, you know, you're technically breaking the law, and I was like, oh, crap, I am so sorry. But she said, you know, your video has gotten a lot of attention and gotten me a lot of sales. So if you want to continue, you know, leave the video up and then continue making more of these, you know, here's what you can do. And it was basically just, she, she would uh, preview the video before I um, posted it publicly on YouTube. And then, um, you know, obviously give credit to her and then include in the description a link to where you can buy the design so yeah it, it, it's worked beautifully she uh she gets a lot of sales from those videos and I don't know her personally but she seems very nice so I, I'm happy and then plus a lot of I've had a lot of comments from viewers saying that they didn't feel that they could have made the bag without my video which was very kind of them to say. I mean, her her instructions, she has like the best tutorials in the industry. Like, they're so thorough and they have lots of photos and everything and it's just well explained, but some people they just like the video. So she recognized that as did I and everyone's happy. And that got me a, some subscribers, so it's nice, so I can share all my
favorite hobbies with people, and it's really fun. And then my husband doesn't have to hear me talk about sewing as often, because he does not care. Just like I don't care about car stuff, like he does. Oh yeah, the high top one. So actually, the, the high top bag, I just put that in my Etsy shop. I had it just kind of chilling, and I thought, why don't I sew the, or why don't I sell this? There's only so many bags that I could possibly use. I I made two of the mini bus ones, and I one of them I I made for myself as a crossbody because it's just big enough to hold a phone. So then when I go for a walk, so I don't have to hold my phone. I can just you know have the bag do it half the time I don't have pockets on whatever I'm wearing. But that's another story. Oh, five, <laughs> five minutes. Oh my gosh, I'm surprised my husband doesn't say the same thing. Like, dude, you got five minutes. Yeah. It's understandable. We we have an, a, we do have an agreement, though, where I, I try, I keep it as short as I can, and then he pretends to care, and I know he doesn't, but it it just it it um it meets my my needs <laughs> where he's just like nodding enthusiastically and being like oh wow that's really great honey wow good job I don't know it's really silly but it works because you know you can, you can't uh, you can't make someone care about something. Just like, I really don't care about his car, or any other person's car, for that matter, and, yeah. But there are some, some YouTubers who make car videos that I do find entertaining, so. If only we could find a sewing channel on YouTube that he found entertaining as well. Probably not, though. Yeah, there's a car YouTuber who got such a huge audience. He actually moved to the next town over from us, um, Bradenton, Florida, and and uh, bought this rundown racetrack um, just right outside of town. Using all his YouTube money, he's got tons and tons of subscribers, and. Now he uh, does all these videos documenting the process of fixing up this racetrack. And a lot of times he gets stuff donated because it's like advertising for the, for the, the contract or whatever. But once in a while I watch those videos because it's somewhat interesting and I think it's cool. It's a, it's a local business that is going to... Uh, bring like tour more tourism and provide some jobs for people in the area. Oh wow, I think I'm finished with this bag. Oh my gosh, yay. Alright, so this is what I did here. Um this was not bad. I mean this looks like it would be really difficult and intimidating, but I mean and, and it definitely doesn't look perfect, but it's the inside, so I really don't care. So alright, let me flip this right side out. Looking good. Oh, this is cute. All right, so let me zip it up closed. Let's take a look. That's pretty big. I guess you maybe you could put ice packs in it or something. I don't know, but yeah. So this is the the bottle carrier with the unintentional color blocking. Some little threads I gotta pull out of here. So there we go. Get all my random quilting. And then we got a handle at the top. And then we have this carrying strap right here. And then 
And these are handbag zippers from Zip It on Etsy. And I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> and then see, you can open it right up. No raw edges showing, except for a little bit right there, but that doesn't matter to me. And my cousin won't care either. Yay! This is so cool. All right, now I'm gonna make the passy pod thing from the same pattern. Let me get a drink of water. If I could put it over here and you could see it. Yeah, there. You can sort of see it off in the background. All right, now I gotta grab these pieces without bumping the camera. Okay, so now we're moving on to the passy pod. <clears throat> it's actually called a pacifier pouch, and this is something weird about me. I hate the word pouch. You will almost never hear me say it. I don't know why I hate it. I just hate the sound of the word. And uh, with my with my students, we use um, Google Classroom. It's just like an online. It's like kind of like a little, little like website kind of thing, where it's just for the students. And we and I post my assignment directions in there, and then all the files and videos that they need to complete them. And I was noticing that a lot of students were not reading the directions. Um, so I thought, well, why don't I put a question at the end of the directions? to see if they're paying attention and then also it's cool because um, it's just another way to get to know the students and then for to get to know each other so one of the one of the questions I put down was uh, name a word that you can't stand I think moist was the number one which also I hate that one but pouch ugh, it's like nails in a chalkboard all right so hold on a second I need to turn oops I need to adjust my air conditioning there we go. Okay. So this zipper is definitely going to be way longer than I need. I have to figure out where I left off. Alright, so I have this carrying strap. Unfortunately, I don't have any more of those little clips. So, um, I'll just attach it later. I'll be able to make the whole bag without having that on there. Okay, so I made these, and I need to attach the zipper, and it is referring me back to the bottle carrier instructions. Three, four, five. Oh, it's right up there. Okay. I think. Oh, no, page four. Step B2. Okay. All right, so I've got my zipper, which is going to be way longer than what I need, and that is all right. I'm going to just sew the ends. Oops. Oh, hi, Shayna. Oh, I'm glad you're joining me. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, embroidering is great. I'm thinking eventually I might get another multi-needle, except this time it's going to be a Happy brand or a Barodon or maybe a Brother, but I think they're a little overpriced. The single needles are just so slow compared to the multi-needle ones. And mine's used and I'm having tension issues with it and I don't know, it's probably me. But yeah, welcome. I am making a pacifier pod from a by Annie pattern right now. And I keep losing my train of thought. It's like ADHD theater here, except I don't think I have ADHD. Alright, so step two A. Okay, so I got my my zipper. I've got my little pieces got my little paper label so I know what everything is. Now I have to remember which side I want out. I want this side out. So I'm going to try to remember to do it correctly this time. Yeah, I hear nothing but good things about Borrowed On. They're very expensive, but it sounds like you get what you pay for. And I, I think I learned that lesson after having that 
crappy red line for all those years. Um, well, baby lock. I heard baby locks are good too. The lady I bought this brother single needle from, she had a ginormous baby lock sewing embroidery condo in her combo in her sewing room. I was like, you go. She was retired, so she probably had uh, lots of time to use it, which was awesome. Okay, so I need to attach the zipper. Oh, no, I need to attach it to these strips. That makes more sense. Okay. So I'm going to attach my zipper. This is really fun watch or uh, sewing with uh, with some company. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a site called Twitch where people live stream themselves playing video games, and there's people on there making like a half a million dollars a month. I saw that and I just thought, well, shoot. I wonder if anyone wants to watch me sew and, and enough that I'd be making a living at it. Probably not, but wouldn't that be awesome? Because to me, I'm thinking I'd much rather sew or watch someone sewing than playing video games, but that's probably because I, I like sewing and I don't play video games, except for Mahjong on my phone once in a while. Not really a gamer. Oh, you're a commercial embroidery? Oh yeah, I've heard of ZSK too. Yeah, I think it's a German one. Okay, so I need to finger press and then top stitch this zipper. Title of her camera in it. Oh. <laughs> That's probably why, Shayna, yeah. The YouTube algorithm is, has its ways of uh, guessing what you want to watch. Yeah, the, I'll have to post a link in the description to um, this, uh, whatever this thing is called that I have my, my phone on. It was one of those lightning deals by um, on Amazon. It was I think it was eleven bucks. It, it's like a like a gooseneck sort of thing, and it has a a phone mount, and then it's got a clip, and the uh, the challenge has been to figure out what to clip it to. That um, oh good. What to clip this thing to that's not going to shake. I tried clipping it to, oh, this table, I think, or this counter, workbench, whatever, and it was shaking, so that was no good. I don't want to make people sick when they're, when they just want to watch me, watch a sewing video, so now I have it on a chair that I just placed next to me. Yeah, it's good to try new stuff. You know, especially if you already have a lot of the equipment. So then it's not as much of a financial investment. Just like cross stitching, that's a really cheap hobby. I used to do it all the time and then then I got the embroidery machine and I'm like, why? But I see the value in it because it'd be something really fun just to do while sitting on the couch watching TV with my husband. So I think I might get back into that too. I got the book Stitch People where it shows you how to make little cross stitch portraits of, of people. And so far I drew myself on the little planning sheets that they have. And then now I have to rebuy all my cross stitch supplies because I got rid of them years ago. Alright, so... Make sure the zipper is down flat. So I'm gonna top stitch this. I 
I could probably be a lot more precise about this seam allowance, or whatever you want to call this top stitching allowance, or whatever, but. Oh yeah, def there are definitely some some machines that I'm gonna trim this rod. There are definitely some machines that are better than others for making bags and purses. So I I bought this um this is a Juki um TL twenty ten Q which now there's a newer model out. So I bet you could probably grab this used. I could not find one used, so I paid, I think, $950 for this last year when we got that stimulus check. I thought, well, I really wanted one, and I can justify it by saying that I'm supporting a local small business, which I did. I, they're on the other coast, but it is, it is a local, well, it's a small Florida business called So Many Things. So anyway, yep, I like it. It's good. The walking foot sucks, but eventually I'll I'll uh, replace it. But I had an Elma. It's over that way. I still use the Elma for my um, quilting of these pieces for the buy any patterns, and then also um, if I need anything other than a straight stitch, like if I'm sewing a knit. I don't do much of that anymore though. Alright. My favorite crap. Uh huh. That's a good question. It's hard to say. Um I I liked doing the embroidery tutorials when my machine was working properly. But I don't love all the editing. But I guess I would have to do editing on a sewing tutorial too, just maybe not as much, because with, with the, uh, with the embroidery videos, when you're just, like, doing a huge, like, fill stitch that takes several minutes, nobody wants to sit and watch that, so you have to, you have to edit it out. So, I don't know, I guess my current favorite would be sewing ones. Alright, what I need to do here... I need to attach these little hanging straps. So, sew this down. I really like that this thing cuts the fabric or the cuts the thread for you. That is delightful. And then this embroidery machine over here it threads itself. I nearly jumped out of my my uh my shoes when I uh saw it happen. It's like it cuts my thread and it threads the needle for me. Are you kidding? You just have to thread it to a certain point and it takes it from there. Oh yeah, the HD9. I I um that was one I was considering, but it was out of my budget. But I I've uh, heard very good things about it. All right, so this is where I'm going to be attaching a ring later, cause I ran out. All right, so I need to s attach the side strip. Okay. All right, so all right, so this is just like last time where I have this extra to use as the binding later. Let me get this sewn on. And if you don't follow um, by any on Instagram, I highly recommend it. Oh yeah. 
I remember when I got my Elma machine. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I never expect to have a huge group of uh, people watching because I don't post consistently enough for YouTube to recommend my videos to a lot of people. And I got a pretty small... I, I don't know, I have, what, almost eight and a half thousand subscribers, which to me, I think is just amazingly, like, just like an amazingly large amount, considering the, uh, the amount of time I put into it. Like, if I was a full-time, full-time YouTuber, I would expect to have more, but if you look at my, uh, all the videos that I have uploaded, it's, uh, very, very inconsistent. There was a time where I was making them every other week. Oh, you on Discord too? Oh, cool. I just, I just got on that, so I don't have much going there. I'm still trying to figure it all out. But it seems very cool. Any place to uh, meet other people who sew and who are also like friendly people, not people who get like, I can't feel like people get all like judgy and pearl clutchy. Like there's all different types of people who sew. They're not all just like a certain like stereotype that a lot of people have in their head about those who sew. So that's what I really liked. Got a lot of threads hanging off of this one. Alright, so what I've got here... I've got my, uh, my passy pod thing, I've got the side seam, and I've got the self-binding sewn on, and then I have my zipper open a little bit, so I can turn this. Oh yeah, Shana, go ahead, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if any of you guys have social media or shops or anything like that, you can post them, I don't mind at all. Or even like other YouTube channels. I mean, you probably heard earlier, I very actively, uh, I very actively promote the Oakland Roots YouTube channel and I, I don't, I wouldn't consider them a competitor in any sort of way. I just think we're, we're all in this together and the more the merrier and there's room for everybody. A lot of times it just comes down to like, like personality type or whatever to determine if, if you uh, watch a particular person's videos and that's a very uh, subjective thing. So everyone gets to like what they like. So now I'm just matching up this uh, either top or bottom doesn't matter. Oh wait though, I almost forgot. I almost forgot to put the pockets on. Yeah, Jess is cool. I want to meet her someday. We're in the same state. And I'm a really, like, kind of a shy kind of person. I'm definitely a really se severe introvert. But I would like to meet her. She just seems really cool. Although I don't share her, uh, her extreme Disney fandom. <laughs> I actually, I, this is probably going to offend people, but I actually don't like Disney. I have just no interest in it at all. Don't see what the appeal is. I mean, I watched all this stuff when I was younger, but... Ugh. Just not a fan. 
So it's like a lot of it, their movies are like emotional manipulation or something. It's like the parents die and then you feel sad. I'm like, I, I, I don't want to feel sad after watching a movie. Like, what is with this? Real life is sad enough. I don't know. Watch a sad movie too, but I understand. I am. I do not hold the prop the popular opinion on that matter, and that is okay. Oh yeah, like with doing like shirts, like with heat presses and embroidery. Yeah. There's a channel called Stalls TV. I used to watch them all the time because I do have a heat press. I mean, it's it's a. It's a real cheap one from Amazon, but I bought it to speed up um, fusing of interfacing for bags. Totally worth it. Yeah, I've been to Disney a couple of times, not really voluntarily, just like to take to take my kids. So, I'm like. I went there once, and I'm like, all right, here you go, guys. I can check that off my uh, my uh, parent to-do list. I took you to Disney World. Now, if you want to go in the future, have fun, but you will not drag me there. You know, it's kind of cute, though. My oldest, um, she's going to uh, take my my mom, her grandma, to Disney next year for the first time ever. Oh, I forgot to make a another clip on this one. It's really cute because my my mom grew up in Wisconsin as one of twelve siblings, super duper poor, lived on a farm, so never got to go to Disney World. So we've kind of joked throughout the years, like, oh, you should go to Disney World because you know, why not? You've never been there. I thought I made clips in this. I guess I didn't. Um, so yeah, so my my oldest daughter. By the time they go, so it's like next year, she will be eighteen, and my mom will be in her mid sixties, and they're gonna have a jolly old time going to Disney World, which I think is very cute. I will be staying home. What are you saying? Oh. Oh, yeah, I imagine they wouldn't have a lot of custom shirts. Because a lot of times people have, have shirts printed for an event, and there have been no events. I know, like, the school I work at is an art school. And, you know, every time they go on a field trip, they get a t-shirt made, and then every time they have, like, a like a performance, like, they have a musical every year, they have a t-shirt made for it, and none of that's happening. So I can imagine that whole industry has been really, really struggling right now. That really stinks. Um, I am sewing... Um, some baby accessories. This is a passy pod. Let me grab the pattern. Hopefully it's not glaring too much. And there's a delay on my screen here. There we go. So this is a um, Patterns by Annie. It's an it's a somewhat older one. Um, that's why it looks a little different from her other ones. But I'm I'm eventually making all three of these. I just I just made the bottle carrier. It's back there. And then right now I'm making this passy pod, and then this play mat. I um, I'm in in the process of getting all those pieces cut. I had to order another yard of fabric from this collection because I didn't have enough. I, of course, I couldn't just stop at one little item. Like the I was first, at first I was just gonna make the changing pad clutch thing the changing station pattern from by Annie and just leave it at that but then I'm like oh no I gotta I want to make all these other things too schools businesses oh wow so do you live in or near Texas then
Yeah, this, this has been just a horrible year. And now there's a lot of uh, talk about, um, cause I, I cause in a lot of the schools have uh, been virtual all year and we have not here in Florida. And at first I was really upset and really, oops, really scared to go back, but it's been fine. Like it really has. Um, our school requires everyone to wear a mask and, and and even though we have to constantly remind some people to cover their nose with the thing too like it goes over your nose and your mouth um, it's been good we haven't had a single known transmission at the school we have we've had students who contracted it elsewhere and then came to school and then later found out they had it and then and then exposed people to it but none of those people have gotten it. So, and we, we, we social distance as much as we can, but like in, in my classrooms, the most I can really do is like a three foot distance for some of the students, just based on the class and room size. And then we eat lunch outside, and or if it's really bad weather, um, we all eat in shifts in the cafeteria so that we can have some distance. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm from Wisconsin, so it's that general upper northwest. Oh, Texas, yeah. I want to visit Texas one. I want I want to visit all the states one day. Eventually. Probably when my kids are grown. I probably wouldn't be interested in going on a giant road trip all together and plus kids are expensive but yeah oh so anyway yeah um so a lot of the schools in other parts of the country um i'm sure everyone's noticed oh crap i just damaged my mesh a little bit it's getting caught on this little wire thing um yeah there's a lot of controversy about reopening and You have to really word things carefully because if you're just like, yeah, it's not, it's totally fine to reopen. Some people are like, they just get really, really upset. You know, I don't understand why. I mean, it's, you're talking about your own personal safety, but I'm just like, hey, I'm only sharing my experience here. It's, it, it's been fine. And then also, because my classroom is a computer lab. So I have a couple seats that were facing each other and they just put some plexiglass just to block any sort of like aerosol or whatever. And I may, I uh, wear all my lovely handmade masks and yeah, so far our district has been fine. We have not had issues with transmission at schools. So here's the inside pocket and then here's the other side. So I'm just making sure that these are both going in the same direction. So yeah, so I, I, I actually feel feel perfectly safe in the schools. I mean it doesn't mean that it's never gonna happen, but it also isn't very productive to sit there and stress about it all the time, which my brain likes to tell me to do, but I'm not listening. Oh, crap. I forgot to mark the center on this. Um, and yeah, the, the, the big thing is the, just the, the social interaction. As much as we all thought that, that uh, young people these days just prefer to, to uh, socialize virtually, they really don't. I mean, they, it's to an extent, but they still need in-person socialization. And we really have to think about mental health. So if we can safely reopen, then we need to. Because it is just heartbreaking hearing about, like, suicides and stuff like that. And just children just being so depressed and isolated and sad. So I'm very glad we've 
and that we've uh, been able to return in person despite the misgivings I initially had. So we do still have the option though, like that we I do have some students who are still studying from home and that was their either their or their parents' choice. Usually their parents' choice. I think all of them have said that they prefer to go back, but their parents are the ones who have the misgivings. So but that's their right. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, exactly, Shana. It's it's really sad because, like, I have I have both. Like, fortunately, it's far fewer than it was at the beginning of the year. But I do have in person kids, and then I have ones at home, and I have to try to teach them simul simultaneously, which I'm not good at. Um, but yeah, there's a there's a a couple of them where I just I. You can tell they're so lonely. It, it's it, it's so sad. Like one of them talked to me after class on the video chat for like an hour. Did not know this student. I mean, I was happy to talk to them, but I'm the whole time thinking like, you must really be lonely to want to talk to your forty-something teacher. <laughs> you know, like I I just I don't think I'm that ex exciting to a ninth grader. So, but yeah, I was talking to that student for like an hour and just thought, wow, I must, they ended up coming back to school though, which was good. I was glad. But yeah, so I, I tried, like one of the classes, we just chat the whole time because I'm teaching them computer stuff. So like right now they're learning in Microsoft Excel. So I think what they're doing is they're doing their assignments outside of class and then just chatting with me, just and you know, and then uh, there's like two or three other students who are on there too, and we're all just kind of talking together, just for this socialization, like to talk to someone besides your immediate family. So I'll just try to be real extra nice to them, and just, like, oh, good to see you, and don't worry. Oh, <laughs> hi. That's cool. It's always fun when people agree with you. It's not a requirement, but it's always nice. Yeah. Yeah, I really try. The one thing that really stinks, though, is that the class that I'm teaching is being discontinued and enrollment's down, so I'm probably going to be laid off at the end of the school year. This is my first year there. Sold my embroidery machine. Scaled back my business and then sorry. And it's a charter school because normally with a school district um, it's called being displaced if that happens with your job and you just get dibs on a job opening that you're qualified for at one of the other district schools. Well this is a charter school so they don't have that. So hooray for that. All right, let me tuck this in here. I just realized, oh. Yeah, I think I'm gonna need to cut more binding for this. But let, let me uh, flip this right side out first just to make sure everything looks okay and I didn't make anything upside down. Yeah, I have a couple teacher friends up north, and they are just flipping out, and so it really de depends, though. Thank you. It, I I really think it it comes down to the masks. You have to enforce it, and they have to be worn all the time. You know, and there is science to back back all that up, and plus. <laughs> It's not, it's not like it's hurting anyone to wear a mask all day. I mean, I, I'm wearing it pretty much the whole day except when I'm eating. It, it, it's fine. I'm, st my, my nose isn't caved in. I've, 
I can still breathe, it's totally fine. And there are lots of different kinds, so if someone doesn't like the one they have, they can just try another style. This is cute! Look at that! How cool is this? I like this! I bet you could use this for a number of different things. This would be good to attach to a dog leash. Yeah, this is a great pattern. I think the pattern itself was, yeah, it was $10 and includes the three projects. Yeah, I'm going to be making this again. I just have to bind these these seam allowances in a, and this will be finished too. And then, yeah, just a little bit of mesh and some fold over elastic. You put the pacifiers in there and it's so cute. All right, let me do some binding now. I might have to cut more of this. I just kind of guessed how much I would need. So. Yeah, what I really wish I could teach was, um, yeah, um, is a family and consumer science. A lot of people still call it home ec, which makes it really confusing <laughs> because um, if you, depending on which term you use, the, the person you're talking to may or may not know what you're talking about. And it's really not a kind of a misunderstood subject because it, it's basically life skills. So not it's not just like cooking and sewing, it's like family relationships and budgeting and how to keep a house and parenting. And I have a teaching certification in that subject, but the programs keep getting cut. Even though they're popular with students, I don't understand. One of the questions I asked um, my students on one of those assignments in Google Classroom was um, what, what class do you wish was offered at our school and I didn't even give them suggestions or whatever or, or examples I just asked the question and over half of them said cooking or and or baking so and that's an art and we're at an art school but There's enrollment, and then there's money to pay for all of that, because that's a rather expensive class to teach, because you have all the equipment, and then the insurance liability stuff, and then the food itself, and all that kind of thing. So that'll probably never happen. And then we have a costume design class there, except the instructor has a that job on lock. Like, so. I will never get to teach it. So. I don't know. So I'm looking at other options. Not necessarily in teaching only. So it's good to be open minded. So I just got certified in Excel, so maybe I can find a job doing that. That was a hard one. I, I, I was actually really scared that I would never be able to pass the, the certification exam for Excel, but I did it. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you could put a mask in this. That's a good idea. And it's such a small item that you can, you could, uh, make this out of scraps from other projects, especially if you're like me and you use a lot of buy any patterns, you end up with small scraps of leftover quilted fabric just like this. So if you're using scraps, it's not really that expensive. And then you're eliminating waste There we 
go. Never thought I would enjoy binding stuff, but I like it. Yeah, I um I learned how to sew partially from my mom. She's always sewn, but she doesn't really get into it as much as I do. She makes these uh, like half squared triangle um, like quilts that are tied not instead of quilted. She does mostly just that over and over again. I'm like, aren't you bored? But no, she's not. Um, and then I, we, we had home ec in my middle school and my high school and everybody took it, which that was cool, even the boys. And then they had shop class too, which I'm really surprised. Like they had us using power tools. Like I, I can't believe no one sewed their arm off or something. But it's cool to be exposed to that sort of thing, even if you don't want to do it after the class. You at least get an appreciation for the skill that goes into it. Because I know a lot of people, they seem to think that sewing is just some easy task that requires no effort and and like no money or anything like that. And it's really annoying. I'm sure you guys have had someone ask you to sew something for them that you really don't want to do, and then they get all mad when you say no, and I'm like, well, my free time belongs to me, and it's not for you to dictate that I need to sew cushions for your patio furniture on my day off. No, thank you. Oh, there's an Instagram account called Can You Sew This For Me? And it's dedicated to that. People send in anecdotes of situations they've had like that where they've been asked, people ask them to sew for them, and then sometimes if they make a mistake of saying yes, they, it's a horror story about how, like, the person didn't like what they made, didn't pay them, or just all kinds of stuff like that. Or they're really rude to them for saying no, or, or for asking for a a fee that is totally fair and reflects that reflects their skills and expertise. But then once in a while they'll have some nice stories where the somebody did sell for somebody and then they they like actually paid them what they were worth and showed their appreciation. Oh yeah, I buy a vinyl from there too. Class of 04. Yeah, I'm a few years before you. I think they probably, I don't know, I think it depends what what area you're in, too. Because the, the county right next to me, they actually still offer home ec classes in most of their schools, or at least some. But unfortunately, that was not a county I liked working for, and I quit. So it was terrible. Yeah, most of my vinyl I buy from My Punk Broidery, and then also MarineVinylFabric.com. They started selling smaller quantities. They used to have to buy a whole yard, and they started selling smaller quantities because they very wisely noticed that there is a market for smaller amounts now, thanks to all of us uh, sewers and crafters making smaller items. There's a local marine upholstery shop in my town because our town is right on the Gulf of Mexico. Either that or a bay or something like that. I'm not or not outdoorsy, so I couldn't tell you. Um, but I went in there once and they gave me a whole trash bag full of scraps. It was pretty nice. Some of it's flannel-backed vinyl, though, which is not great to work with. But if it's the regular knit back green vinyl, it's awesome. Yeah. Oh, the vinyl place? It's uh, My Punk Broidery and then MarineVinylFabric.com. And MarineVinylFabric.com is also on Etsy. And the last time I ordered from them, I looked at their site and their Etsy. And I ended up ordering from, the, uh, from their Etsy shop. It seemed like a better deal. So I would just look at both. 
All right, so here's this. Um, I don't think I have any more. I might have to cut more bias binding for the other side. Let me look really quick. Alright. Incoming. There we go. Alright. These are just uh, dish pans from the Dollar Tree. I have probably two dozen of these. Yeah, see, here's the other pattern that I'm going to be doing. And these are great for storing stuff, like projects that you are, um, that you're working on, because I rarely, like, cut and sew all in one step. I usually just do whatever I feel like doing, and then once I cut it out, I just set it in one of these, one of these, uh, dishpan bucket things. Oops, sorry. Um, and it sits in here until I feel like making something. Oh. Here's some more bias binding for the other project. I'll just use that. Let me move this out of the way and not bump this chair again. There we go. All right. So here's the, on the newer by any patterns, they give you these little, um, these little fabric labels, I just use my, my printer to make a copy of the page so the pattern stays intact. And then I have these. So obviously I can't show you them all because they have measurements on them, but yeah, bias binding measurements aren't really exactly a trade secret, so that should be fine. So now I need to use this to find this other seam. See, these things are just so satisfying to make. I don't know, just the directions are so good. And then the, the results are good. I mean, the hardest part is probably the, you know, this binding step because this is a small round object. But even if you do a bad job on it, it's the inside of the little bag, so no one's going to see it. And then you got that practice. So I, I mean, I just keep getting better and better with practice, as most people would. I think this little metal thing is bent. It's supposed to be up higher. There kept getting caught on the mesh. So it's it's really cool seeing Oh poop. Thanks for letting me know. I'll have to fix that later. Oh, and a, a funny and embarrassing story I have, speaking of my Etsy shop. So I sell a, um, acrylic felt on there. And a few, a couple of years ago when I started selling it, I calculated what the cost of it was. Um, and so then I, that's what I based my price on. And then... Um, and then so I so I was so I was selling the felt. I was also using it, you know. So then the selling of the felt would help cover my costs too and still make a profit. So long story short, because I've been getting a lot of felt orders lately, and realized I don't know if if my math was off before or it probably is just said that all the prices like shipping costs and everything have gone up. But I was actually losing money on every single felt order for who knows how long. So, math is important. So I had to I, I had to literally double my felt prices the other day and raise the shipping cost just to make a tiny amount of money. Like on the five packs, like I sell a pack with five sheets of felt. 
I'm only making about a dollar on that sale. So it's really probably not worth my time, especially now that I'm no longer using felt myself, because before it wasn't really that much extra work to go and you know order from the from national non-wovens. And the 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 freight is so expensive. I mean felt barely weighs anything. <clears throat> But it's bulky. So I feel like they need to do like what they do with those foam mattresses and like just like suck all the air out of the package to make it smaller and flatter. Because the shipping is nuts. Like if you if you um, inquire with them and like get their uh, their wholesale um, catalog with all their prices, it, it, it looks like the, the felt is super cheap, but that's not with the freight. Holy cow, it's nuts. So, yeah, I'm probably not gonna sell felt on Etsy anymore. Not unless I go back to um, making and selling items that are made of felt. So, we shall see. what to make next. I guess I could sew the nine patch thing together for the uh, play mat. Oh crap, I did this backwards. Eh, I'll unpick it, why not? Oh yeah, letter jackets, yep. I really like them, except, um, I know their wool felt is made in the U.S., but, um, when the pandemic first started, they mentioned something about importing their acrylic felt. I really need to look into that, because I, I have in my listing that it's American-made, which is important to me, and if it's not, I don't want to, to advertise as such. It's been a been a very busy year. Like I started my my teaching job the week before the lockdown started. So and I had very limited prior teaching experience. So I had to try to learn how to do all that, learn how everything worked at the new school, and then learn how to teach remotely. And then also deal with all the other effects of the pandemic that everyone else was dealing with. So that was a time. So yeah, things like uh, felt kind of got pushed off to the side. Um, acrylic felt. Yeah, it's um. Yeah, acrylic felt is like the, the cheapest, most widely available type of felt. And yeah, Joann's has it. It's crap. Um, and then Walmart, Hobby Lobby, they all have it. It's all garbage. The Michaels stuff isn't, isn't very good either. So the stuff from National Nonwovens is really thick and really, really soft. It's just beautiful. It's, I mean, and it has, they have lots of really nice colors. Not as many as a wool felt. The wool felt is just like amazing array of colors. Um, but it's just really, really good quality felt. You can machine wash and dry it even. It's just fabulous. I actually have a video on my channel about felt if you're interested. But yeah, it's great. And, and when you order it wholesale, the price is, well, Last I checked, anyway, the price was lower than buying the, the, the garbage felt that they have on retail. This stupid thing keeps getting caught. It's ripping my mesh. That is not a good thing. 
But yeah, last I checked, it was yeah, buying it wholesale was cheaper. Like it was like half the at the at, at the time it was half the price of buying it retail at Joann's or any of the other big box craft stores. But now prices change, so I I don't know what the cost comparison is now. I must have belt bent this little thread guide here. Because I've sewn with mesh before and it hasn't gotten caught. Decide whether or not to share this project on Instagram. So my cousin is on there, and I believe she follows me. It's probably going to be obvious that it's for her. This thing. Ah! Quit getting caught on my mesh. isn't going to be the best binding job ever, but honestly, I don't really care. It's on the inside. No one's going to notice. It still will serve its purpose very well. There we go. <sighs> yeah, they have all kinds of different felt. They'll, um, they sent me a, a whole binder with little samples, like little swatches of their felts. Oh, see, look at this. I got a little hole in it. Because it's stupid, whatever this is called on here. I wonder if I can kind of glue it back together. And I got one on this side too, I think. Or not? Here, I'm gonna put some fray block on it. Yeah, be careful with this stuff. If you haven't used it before, it just comes out like, like don't ever squeeze this tube. You're gonna have like a flood of fray block everywhere. Where did I put the cap? I just had it. Throw it all away. Oh, there it is. There we go. Yay! Yeah, maybe I'll have to put a little, little stitch in there. I think I'll do that, because otherwise that's going to bother me. Oh, I got a little bit of one there, too. That one is smaller and towards the bottom, but this one, oh. I just heard my husband yelling out there. Probably should have let him know that I'm recording, but it was kind of a spontaneous decision. I think I got some on there. Ah, oh, that bothers me. Too late now. All right, well. Let's uh, flip this right side out. Yeah, I'm definitely going to try hand stitching that, Cindy. So, poke all these edges out. 
Let's see how it looks. Yay! So I just need my clip that I have to buy. Shape this a little bit. Oops. Oh, that's adorable. All right, then I gotta open it back up again because I gotta let that fray block dry. Where is it? Here it is. All right. Very nice. I will set this aside now. Oops. Oh, crap. I'm sorry. I'm bumping this camera. Figure out which page I'm on now. All right, so I need to make my nine page or nine patch. Thank you. Let me grab the envelope again so you can see what I'm working on. Get these in the right order. I think. What am I doing? I don't know. All right, so I have just made this. I made that over few minutes ago and now this is the same item so I don't know what that circle thing is I don't know but anyway that is a play mat so I'm going to make some of it I don't remember if I have enough for the whole thing I need to find those blocks here we go directions out of the way. Okay, so here are my uh, blocks. It's like a nine patch thingy. I'm not a, I'm not a quilter, so, oops, that there it is. Let me just get my iron woke up. Alright, so I have to figure out how to, I'm going to do this. Decide on the arrangement of blocks, keeping these points in mind. So the pad will be folded into, into thirds, and then the center will be visible when the mat is folded. And then it's cutting into a circle, so I'm going to lose parts of the outer blocks. Okay. Well, the fabric I use, that's not going to matter. So I have this fabric again, I have this fabric again, and then this other one. These are all from the, the same Esoterra line. This is the one I just bought and cut out today because I had run out of the other print that I have. Where is that other print? Oh, it's over here. It's like a mint green or something. All right, now I have to figure out how to do this. I guess I would, oh, grab a <clears throat> scrap of paper out of here. Okay, so I have, okay, so I have all these blocks and I have three different fabrics, so I need them all to not be touching each other. Oh, this is hard. Okay, let me try a pencil. This is from my felty video. This is a flamingo felty with little ribbon legs. This is, I think, from yeah Parker on the porch. And then I just glued a piece of felt in the back and accidentally glued it to the pencil. So it's they're forever joined until I this pencil runs out. All right. So let me do, I'll call the fabrics A, B, and C. So I have A, oh no wait, I already messed up, and I don't have an eraser. Oh boy, this is already going great. All right, so A, so then they're not sharing a side. And then B, and I guess C would be here, so then 
another B. And then a C. Okay, then a B and a B. Oh, I think I figured it out. Okay. A, B, C, A, 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 B, C, B, and B. So I don't have any same ones touching each other. Okay, now I have to take that knowledge and sew these all together. Okay. So, so this is block A. And then this is going to be block B. Okay, good thing these are these are not one-way prints, otherwise I'd make it even more challenging. Okay, so I'm going to sew this together at the side. So I should probably stick a couple clips on this. Okay, check my stitch length, and then I think this is the, yeah, quarter inch. Pretty much all I know about quilting is from the, the phase I had of watching um, the Midnight Quilt Show with Angela Walters on YouTube a while ago. Because she has a really cool personality, but I just can't get into quilting. No matter how cool that lady is, I just can't get into it. Alright. So, right sides together. Okay, so this... This mint green with the dinosaur fossils is going to be fabric C. All right. I like how quiet this machine is. Especially when it's not running, um, cause, which sounds, oh, I ran out of bobbin thread, crap. Which sounds weird, but um, my other machine, when it was running, it always made a, you could always hear it. Ooh, I need to uh, do some cleaning and oiling. Here's your public service announcement for today. Don't forget to clean and oil your machine. Sorry for blocking the camera. All right, I'm not gonna do a super super thorough job. All right, gotta wind the bobbin. All right, this shouldn't take long. suddenly not wind a bobbin. Let's try again. Weird. Nope, nope, that's not even on the bobbin. That is underneath it. Seriously, what is my problem? There. Um, yeah, um, this is a Juki TL2010Q, and yeah, it came with this cable thing, which I used for a really long time, and then I was watching uh, one of the Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness's tutorial videos, and she has the same machine, and she wasn't using the cable, so I thought, well, I guess I'll, maybe I'll give that a try. You know, she's a pro. She's, uh, probably got a a reason for not using it so it might just be personal preference but I thought hey why not give it a try and then yeah it's sitting over there I haven't used it since it's probably good if you're doing quilting type stuff but this is as quilty as I get 
drop of oil in here. Okay, oiling doesn't take that long and it is very easy to do. And very important because all your moving parts need to be lubricated to run smoothly and not burn up your sewing machine. So, very important. There we go. Cut off that tail. All right. Let's get this tied off so I can re-thread. Oops. pull it through. It's so much easier than having to re-thread every time and I don't know why I didn't start doing that a long time ago. Alright, let's drop our bobbin thread. There it is. Knee levers. Oh yeah, um, I love this knee lever so so much. I got used to it very quickly and love it. My Elma had one too, it, or has one, but um, many, many years ago I had it serviced and for whatever reason the knee lifter stopped working after that and that wasn't even the thing that was being serviced. But yeah, it is so convenient. I love it. Alright, I just gotta press these seams open really quick. Shot, but not today, I guess. This doesn't take. 